जय हिंद गुड आफ्टरनून टू वन एंड ऑल आई एम लेडिकेटेड मोनिका रिप्रेजेंटिंग आर्म फोर्सेज प्रिपरेटरी डिग्री कॉलेज बोनगिर एज वी ऑल नो दैट इन दिस देश ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग इनोवेशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजिकल डेवलपमेंट देर इज अ बेसिकली कंस्टेबली अमाउंट ऑफ डिपेंडेंस ऑन मैथ्स विच इज बेसिस फॉर ऑल सच डेवलपमेंट्स द फंडामेंटल कैलकुलेशन लाइक एडिशन सब्सट्रैक्शन मल्टीप्लीकेशन डिविजन दिस ऑल आर बेसिकली मैथमेटिकल इन नेचर which every one of us uses them in our day to day lives in these days we all know that architects are engineers who can't do math but they were doing the math and they were impressed of math so my topic is architecture in mathematics in architecture architects are engineers who can't do math undoubtedly everyone heard this but definitely this statement is not true because architect need math and architects do math but their applications are a little bit different may be unique from us let's see in detail how why an architect need math architects need math and do math and but their applications are a quite a bit different from us to convert units this is the basic reason why an architect need math and architects deals with areas and units where to measure the conversion of units there there will convert measurements from one system to the other like centimeters into meters and meters into kilometers etc and the next reason is to figure out scale architects generally figure out the scale in the ratio of 1 is to x where 1 is the unit length in drawing representing a whole uh, representing a whole distance in the universe and x depends on this figure out the scale and the third reason is architects uses adjust proportions proportions are ratios between numbers and proportions play a vital role to success any design so golden ratio is the one of the most proportion used by used by an architect to construct a site and to design a site now let's see in detail why an architect need and why an architect need math and let's see in detail how the classification of architecture was coming to force there is a greek architecture the main principle behind the greek architecture was the golden ratio greek arch- architectures was influenced by the rome architectures also in islamic architecture the islamics were used the 1 is to root 2 ratio to construct their sites in egyptian architecture they were using the geometrical structures like the pyramids to construct the buildings and monuments etc coming to the indian architecture they were using and there was following of the mathematics in astrology to build their buildings and the temples and etc in the modern architecture there was seeing they were used the adjust proportions ratios and parametric designs to construct the modern forms now let's see in detail how an ancient greek architecture was influenced by mathematics greek buildings are constructed with the help of a mathematical principles like the golden ratio pythagoras theorem cartesian coordinate city and simplicity perspective and harmony not only that greek architecture is also influenced the architects of rome now let's see in detail how the golden principle influenced the greek architecture the main idea behind the golden principle is when we divide the larger part by the smaller part it is also equals to the whole length divided by the larger part and it was denoted by phi p h i phi and it is approximately equals to 6.18 and Phidias is a Greek sculptor and also a mathematician who introduced the phi and who studied about the phi and designed in construction. Let's see an application how a uh, how a golden ratio is used in the construction of a Greek architecture. There is a Parthenon in Athens is a one of the best example how a golden ratio is applic- applic- applied in the, in that. Let's see how. a golden ratio formed by a picture next pythagoras theorem pythagorean is a scientist 
Pythagorean is a mathematician who introduced the Pythagoras theorem and Pythagoras theorem is not only influenced the architecture but also it is influenced the many construction sites also and the Pythagoras can be used to build staircases, roofs uh, and it, it can even to calculate to calculate a angle to safely measuring a ladder Pythagoras theorem was used and here we have an example how a city is formed into a right angle triangle Pythagoras theorem states in a right angle triangle and when we see Pythagoras theorem the main principle of the Pythagoras theorem is hypotenuse square is equals to side square plus side square and the Pythagorean is a scientist who and it is also a equation which can be used in many times of constructing the buildings and etc. Let's see how a Cartesian coordinate system influenced the Greek architecture. Cartesian coordinate system is a graph which horizontal line is known as x axis and the vertical line is known as y axis and the, the thin lines formed over the graph which is also known as grids and the grids are graphed the grid points are graphed with the representing of a pair of x comma y. Here we have an example of city of Olympias. City of Olympias is a application of the Cartesian coordinate system where the grids are formed in the city of Olympias. Let's see three forms of architectural structures. There are the three forms which was influenced the overall architecture, the Doric, Ionic and the Corinthian this was the three forms which was influenced by the architecture to construct the buildings. This order is also known as pillars. Doric, it was very sturdy and plain and the base was with the cylindrical shaped structure with a main grand Greece and the colonies in Italy and Sicily, and the capital which is also known as top which is of the top of the pillar. It was constructed by the basic geometrical shapes like circle over enclosed with the rectangle and square. Coming to the ionic order, ionic order is a little thin and more elegant than Doric and the capital is de designed very much with a scroll with its ends rolled up. It was, in, it was mainly found in eastern Greece and in islands. In ionic order, the pillar base was with the shape of the cylindrical shape with a uh, base and the capital with top of the capital which was scrolled, scr there was a scroll like structure which was its ends rolled up like a shell. Let's see Corinthian order. Corinthian order is also known as the Corinthian pillar which was used, used by the Greek architectures and it is often used in the Greek world but, is, but it is now seen in Roman temples and capitals etc. And the Corinthian pillar was formed with the base of the cylindrical shaped structure and the mathematical principles of the capital are enclosed by the acanthus leaves in it. Now let us see in detail, how, let us see an examples of the three orders of the pillars. Lincoln Memorial, it was a basic example of Doric order and Temple of Zeus is an example of Ionic order. Corinthian capital which was famous in Greek architecture which was an example of Corinthian order. Now I want to ask you a question, did you go to a movie theatre? Right, now I am explaining about the Greek theatres. Greek theatre is a very special theatre which was formed with a semicircular shape in it that is the theatre of Koilon. It is composed of seating area with a semicircle like structure which we are seeing that a protractor shape structure is forming in that and the theatre of Koilon is mainly based upon the geometrical shapes and the center point was divided into two semicircles which was formed to use the audience to sit over the vertical rows and the horizontal walkways. Now, let us see in detail how an Islamic architecture was constructed and how the mathematics influenced the Islamic architecture in detail. Islamic architecture, the ratio of most Islamic architecture was 1 is to root 2. Islamic philosophers had learned about geometry and its shapes. 
there are different geometrical shapes which was influenced by an islamic architecture the plan the the main principle behind the islamic architecture was the square and the rectangle which which plays a significant role in islamic architecture while constructing the buildings domes and mosque and islamic and the architecture is combined with geometry and traditional art to form a new art with consisting of different patterns enclosed in it and it is often used with the decorating lines of tiling patterns and which was enclosed of some decorating lines and these decorating li lines are incorporated into them and the decorated lines which was affects the midpoint of the each edge at 108 degrees celsius do you know what is tessellation yeah tessellation is created when a shape is repeated over and over again within a plane covering a gaps or overloops using a set of five tiles which is also known as giri tiling we are we are heard about the giri tiling for the first time but there is a five types of giri tiles which was very much influenced the greek architecture that is the decagon pentagon rhombus bobbin and bow tie these are the basic five tiles which were influenced the giri tiling and it was set of five tiles which was enclosed with a shape covering the all and over and over again there is repeating within a plane and there were no gaps overlaps over there now let's see the giri tiling is the edge of each five tiles are with the same length and the tiles also have a decorating lines incorporated into them and the tiles were used with the angles of 72 and 108 degrees to form the basic structure of islamic architecture the giri tiles plays a main role in islamic architecture while constructing the mosque domes domes and etc the main principle behind the giri tiling was 1 is to root 2 ratio and also 72 degrees and 108 degrees angles now let's see how an interior angles of giri tiling was established and here we see a decagon bow tie rhombus and pentagon and here we have 44 degrees interior angles for the decagon and we here we have the bow tie with the 72 degrees celsius and there are the some interior angles of rhombus and pentagon enclosed in it now let's see the star ribbed dome the star ribbed dome eventually progressed until there could be 12 64 24 32 64 and 64 rotations in one dome it is the star ribbed dome which was seen in the cap it is also known as a capital which was enclosed of the upper of the mask and the dome was with a triangle shaped enclosed of the stars with a triangle shaped structures and the star ribbed balanced domes which were dynamic appearance and the relationship to the both the circle at the same time the star ribbed balanced proportions are very much used in construction of domes and mask and etc now let's see gol gambas it was the largest building which were it was the largest and the second highest dome in the world and the gol gumbas which was which was externally the building is a great cube with a turret or tower attached to each angle with a large hemispherical dome covering the whole and here we see how a site plan of the gol gumbas was created they were using the great cube which was a hemispherical shaped structure inside there were geometrical shapes enclosed in it to construct the gol gumbas there was used the basic proportion of 1 is to root 2 and also there were used the principles of the golden ratio and pythagoras theorem while constructing the turret or tower which was enclosed attached to the each of the side of the dome now let's see how taj mahal symmetry was influenced the greek architecture here we see we are we are seeing the taj mahal mausoleum in india which was a reflection symmetry which means it was a mirror image was forming in the taj mahal how the taj mahal is uh, the symmetry is nothing but a mirror image it is a replica of the same thing 
Now let us see some more examples how cementrine architecture was formed. Now I want to explain in detail about the Greek architecture. Greek architecture, Greek architects were very much influenced by the geometrical shapes like pyramids, uh, rectangles, triangles, circles and etc. Let's see the first type of pyramid which was also known as step pyramid. The most famous structure in all over the Egypt is the pyramid. So here we are seeing that the first type of pyramid which is also known as the step pyramid which was constructed by Djoser architect and by using the principle of the Pythagoras theorem. The main principle behind the construction of the pyramid of Djoser was the Pythagorean theorem. Here we are observing some of the pyramidal shape structures and also a pyramid of Djoser which was an architect invented this and the ratio of 1 is to root 2 are included in it. Let's see the spinix. Spinix is a mixture, it has a head of a king and it is wearing a cloth, it has a body of a lion and it measures 20.22 meters in height, 19.3 meters in width and 73.5 meters in length. Here we are observing a picture which is formed enclosed of a circles and there is a golden proportion which was formed in that spinic structure. The spinic structure is based on a spinix is a mixture of a king and wearing a cloth with a loin, loin shaped structure. Here we are observing the measurements are different and the spinix, the golden proportion is the more, most proportion which was used to construct the spinix structure in Egyptian architecture. Next, I am going to ask you a question. Do you know the difference between pi, pi pi and the phi pi? Right, there is a huge difference between the pi and the phi. Pi, pi is nothing but the circumference of a circle with its diameter and it is denoted by and it is approximately equals to 22 by 7 which is 3.14 and phi, phi is nothing but phi, phi and it is ratio of 6.18, it is also known as golden ratio. Here now I am going to explain you in detail about the pyramids of Giza. The Egyptian used both pi and phi to construct the pyramid of Giza. And the perimeter of the Egypt of the pyramid was 1760 cubits which was divided by its height 280 cubits and we get 6.28 which is similar to 2 pi. Here it, pyramids of Giza is also a uh, wonderful construction in the seven wonders of the world. And we are using the pyramid of Giza construction with the help of the golden proportion and also a Pythagoras theorem. And inside it, there was using a 1 is to root 2 proportion to build the structure of 7 mummies. It is also known as 7 mummies in our language. Now, let's see in detail about Indian architecture. Indian architecture, which is the basic form of architecture which follows the astrology in mathematics. Indian architecture, which were, while saying the Indian architecture we, the, from the Vedic period onwards Indians are following the mathematics and there was a basic principle that mathematics in, includes the Vastu Shastra which influenced the Vedic period onwards the Indian architecture was used the mathematics principles and calculations by with the help of Vastu Shastra. Vastu Shastra is an ancient canon of architecture and town planning employs mathematical drawings called mandalas. Coming to the Indian architecture, we were very much aware of temples and the sites. They were co constructed with the help of the Vastu Shastra principle and the mandalas enclosed in it. Let's see in detail how mandalas are formed with the geometrical shaped structures. Mandalas are geometric patterns which means circle in Sanskrit. The basic form of mandalas is a square with four gates with a circle with a center point. Yantras are also known as mandalas. Here we are seeing some geometrical shapes which was a circle formed over and over again in a loop. And the mandala is put to use in site planning and in architecture to a process called padavinyasa. 
the padavinyasa process is used to construct the sites and planning of your design of the sites to construct the site planning of indian architecture this, this is a method here by any site can be divided into grids or modulos or padas now let's see mandalas and its properties sites are divided into number of squares and from the range of 1 is to 32 here we are seeing different types of structures which was the properties of mandalas that is gra sakala hichaka pita pita mandala mahapita and so on there are the seven mandalas which was influenced the indian architecture and the range of the mandala is from 1 to 32 that is 10 24 square units here there is a sri yantra chakra which was used to construct the buildings and in temples etc now have you ever gone to temple yeah let's see how the temples are formed how the architects constructed the temples with the help of mathematical principles and mathematical uh, geometrical shapes behind it that is the fractal geometry fractal geometry is a basic principle which was used to construct the temples a fractal is a never ending pattern created by repeating a similar process over and over in ongoing feedback loop here we are seeing some temple which was enclosed of some geometrical shapes inside it the above geometrical shapes is also known as tessellations it means it was created in the loop of structure with the geometrical shapes enclosed in it and the temples are formed with the principle of the factorial geometry which was repeated over and over again now let's see in detail how a biggest tallest and the wonderful temple in kajoro that is the kandriya mahadev temple influenced by the factorial geometry the symbolism of the factorial geometry in hindu temple architecture here we are observing the pictures of two images uh, that is the Kandriya Mahadev temple which was in the sites of the five sites and that was the old body of Shikara above the sanctuary. It means that the architects design a plan with the some of the measurements they were taking to construct the plans. Here figure A shows that the old body of Shikara above the sanctuary and the figure B shows that the similar part of the whole Shikara and figure C self similar part of the whole Shikara. It means the process is repeating over and over again with a basic symmetric process enclosed in it. And the, this was a famous temple in Kajoro, which was the Indian, which was the basic of the Indian architecture temples. And it is a, one of the most tallest, biggest, and the wonderful temple in Kajoro, which was situated at Karnataka in India. Now let's see some of the temples, how the Indian architecture was constructed the temple with the help of mathematical principles and mathematical shapes enclosed in it. Here we are seeing Bradishwara temple which was forming an isosceles triangle. How the isosceles triangle is formed? When we join the two extreme points of the temple with the Vimana which is also known as Gopuram of the temple then the, we will see the an isosceles triangle formed in it and here we see the Konar Sun tam, temple the Konar Sun, Sun temple which was situated at Odisha and we are seeing some different geometrical shapes enclosed in it here we are observing triangle cylindrical shape and rectangle square which was the formation of several geometrical shapes included in Konar Sun temple Next, we will see the Ranganatha Swami temple, which was situated in Tanjavur, Tamil Nadu. It was one of the famous temple and we are seeing a trapezium shaped structure forming over the temple. And here the temple is forming with a step over and over again. It is a repetition of the same structure is taking place. So, it is also known as recursion. Recursion is a process where they uh, basic structures are repeated over and over again. So, in the uh, Indian Indian architecture, they were influenced by the temples with the help of some of the uh, 
some of the principles like the geometry, fractal geometry, recursion and tessellations are formed in a loop etc. Now let us see in detail how modern architecture works and the, what are the basic principles behind the modern architecture. Modern architecture or the modernist architecture which was based upon a new and innovative technologies of construction, particularly their uses the glass and the cement of reinforced and their uses the st huge steel with construction with the, with the help of this basic principle uh, which, which with the help of the basic materials they were using the construction and the modern architecture architects uses the uh, process of uh, parametric design which was a free form of architecture in the modern architecture they were using here we are we are observing a picture which is forming a circle with a square enclosed in it and the glass shaped form glass shaped structures are seen the above now let's see about the first modern building it was also known as the first modern building which was to due to the large usage of steel and glass and here we see the crystal palace built in 1870s it is also known as crystal palace and it revolutionized the culture of the buildings and the building with a building is used with a steel of a large amount huge amount of steel and a glass enclosed in it here we are seeing the building with a different structure where half semi half semicircle is formed in it with a cylindrical shaped structure above besides there were seeing some of the rectangle shaped doors which was windows are enclosed in it now let's see now, now let's see a image with a hexahedron which was the equal faces the modern architectures are using the hexagon hexagon hexahedron and some of the some basic structures which was with the six equal faces enclosed in it here we are observing the image how the six faces are enclosed in it next see garin garin is also known as the london skyscraper which was situated at london and behind the garin construction there were used the parametric design which was used by an architect and garin was the surface of the garin was the populated panels standing 591 feet with 41 floors london skyscraper and they were using some of the basic grids like structures which is influenced with the geometry behind we are seeing some of the pictures like uh, a rectangle and a triangle shaped structures which was enclosed in it standing 151 feet tall and with 41 floors which is which, which is also known as a london skyscraper which is in the which is in the form of biggest height cn tower in tornado now here we are seeing cn tower in tornado it is the largest tower and the free standing structure in the world and also contains a golden ratio in its design the golden ratio is when we divide the larger part by the smaller part it is also equals to the whole length divided by the larger part and it was denoted by phi phi that is phi which is equals to 6.18 here we are seeing the cn tower in tornado which is the biggest tower which enclosed of a different structure of which uh, enclosed of a di different structure with a geometric shaped structures now Buj Khalifa it was also no Buj Khalifa which was situated at Delhi and triangles and semicircles enclosed in it now I am summing up with this so we all see math is a very important part of being an architect mathematics influences the not only the architecture but also influences a woman and their life live mathematics is somewhere that is found in everywhere thank you jai hind matches everywhere